Most are afraid of unknown depths, skirting shores thinking world flat. I'm with the island girls in celebration of new religion. Nobody led me or said this way. I sailed alone on makeshift raft with wind as companion. Fate for deliverance, confidence enough to assess new disposition. Seekers of lost paradise may seem fools to those who never sought the other worlds. Welcome to Momentary Zen with Zen Garcia. Visit www.fallenangels.tv. You're listening to Revolution Radio. Pick it up next week. As little as long ago, or as far away as forever, this is where we meet to celebrate what never was as it comes to pass. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen here at Revolution Radio on Studio B, and we'll be broadcasting for the next two hours. I thank all of you that are in the chat room for joining us that are tuned in to freedomslips.com and all of those that are listening over mobile devices and uh, various other platforms and mediums. We appreciate your fellowship and you taking the time to join us live and to be part of the show. We do absolutely consider you to be some of the wisest and most well-researched individuals out there, and uh, it's an honor to you know, to dialogue with you in the way that we do. Uh, this evening I have as guests with me both Carolyn Hamlet and Dan Duval, and uh, we will be discussing things, topics such as the organization, the plan, the New World Order, Nephilim, pre-existence, and the end game, and how all of these things tie into current events, where we are in the world as far as the being the fig tree generation and being witness to the outpouring of spirit and the uh, the amount of information that is coming to the forefront and is available to us, especially with the internet, is absolutely amazing. And that really, there's no excuse for ignorance. Um, and there's so much to be learned uh, in order for us to individually prepare ourselves for those things that are coming, as well as to school and educate our children, our parents, our loved ones, friends, associates, acquaintances, on everything uh, that is connected to what we will be discussing this evening. But let me first give Carolyn a chance to um, give a shout out to the listening audience. Carolyn, are you there, sister? Yes. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Uh, thanks for uh, inviting me on, Zen. I've been looking forward to uh, talking, to being on, being on your show. Um, I understand you have a an audience that is, like you said, educated and very aware. And I've never, uh, I've never spoken uh, or or shared my information with this this group before. And um, I just ask everybody to. Be patient as I'm trying to share what I know and what I've experienced. And if anyone has any questions, I'll do my very best to answer them. And uh, also, if there's a, if there are any questions that are not answered on the program, people are welcome to email me. And I, you know, I go through spells where I I uh, am good at answering emails, and then I have to slack off a bit. I'll let you know that ahead of time, but. I'll do my best to answer the emails I receive. And my email address is, right now it's crhamlet, that's with two T's, hamlet with two T's, crhamlet at gmail.com. And thank you. Well, thank you, Carolyn. We appreciate uh, your willingness to come onto the program. And we know that you don't do a lot of shows with a lot of individuals, so I consider it a great privilege to be able to do and conduct this interview, uh, interview with you and with Dan, and I know that he's very well versed in your story, and I'm sure that many of the listeners in the audience, if not all, are familiar with you and the 
the topics and the things that you have written about and um, done um, done shows on. And for those that don't know or have not heard of Carolyn, she uh, is an, an insider in that she has come out of the Illuminati organization and has an interesting perspective from that to be able to share with us. And so uh, it truly makes her story perplexing and uh, compelling, to say the least. And there's very few um, others like John Todd and Savali and um, others like uh, Kathy O'Brien and Bryce uh, Thompson or Taylor or something like that. But anyways, it's very few that have been able to come out and that have lived um, long enough to be able to do the kind of work that you're doing. And so uh, this will definitely be a very interesting show. Uh, Dan, let me um, give you a chance to also address the audience. And if you would, sir, please do share where you conduct your own um, interviews because you have your own radio program as well as any websites or anything of that. And I'll also, Carolyn, afterwards, uh, I'll give you a chance to share your you know, website and information as well. Well, thanks a lot, Zen. And am I coming through okay? Yes, you are. You both sound very well. Perfect. Well, it's a pleasure to be on your program. Thank you for inviting me and Carolyn. Uh, your listeners are going to be in for a real treat tonight as they are able to learn what Carolyn knows. I am basically here to provide some support, possibly more in-depth explanations on certain things if necessary. And uh, my personal website is bridemovement.com. That's bride is in the groom and a bride and then movement. Dot com And from that website, people can be redirected to several of the things that we're doing which uh, includes a lot of interviews that, and information we've put out on the subject of mind control, which is the underlying, uh, I, I guess you could say, common denominator when it comes to uh, many of the things that are going on in the highest levels of the New World Order agendas, occult societies, and Luciferian groups. It, they all create trauma and uh, use mind control techniques in order to uh, do what they do and keep their people under their control. And, uh, you know, um, Carolyn has uh, survived that. And um, I've been along for the journey with her. Uh, we shared her story, which is also available from my website, direct link, bridemovement.com. Um, people want to go to the mind control tab. And she has her entire seven part story found there. And um, I've also had the privilege of working with her through many of the uh, things involved in healing from what she has come out of, including deliverance and uh, the you know integration, the breaking of the programming itself. And so um, that's a bit about me. And I will just throw Carolyn's website out there for her. It is www.beyondthephysicalrealm.com. All right. Well, I want to thank you as well, Daniel, for taking the time to join us. I know that you're traveling and, um, you know, even, I guess, just getting into your hotel and getting comfortable. And so <laughs> yeah. we appreciate that as well, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's a, it's a privilege to be here. All right, Carolyn, um, wanted, he did give out your website, but is there anything else that you would like to share or any other websites or um, you know, projects that you're involved in, things that you are uh, working towards. Uh, I know that both of you have done so much together, you should even consider putting out a, a book, you know, something that would summarize your relationship and the things that y'all have covered and talked about o over the years. Well, I have many articles that I've written that I haven't put on my blog there's it's I have to write when I can um, the the truth is a lot of times I don't feel well um, I'm determined this year I'm going to I'm going to uh, get myself back together <laughs> I've, I've had to go through a lot of healing you know as I spent most of my life not feeling. I was taught not to feel, and part of that's programming, you know. But 
that if it's kind of like being a Spock, you know, from Star Trek, um, and, and learning to live strictly out of the intellect, examine the emotions. But what I've had to learn in uh, my healing process is that in order, when memories come forth from my past, uh, many things I've, I've, I remember, but there's some things I had like partial memories. When they have come forth, I have to heal from the memories because they're suppressed for a reason. And uh, maybe sometime on this show we'll go more into that for the people that are not real familiar with how that works. But um, I'm having in, in my life what I've had to do is try to learn how to live as a human being. <laughs> it may sound funny to people, but <laughs> uh, I, I grew up with the belief that I wasn't really human and it, that actually superior to humans and living out of the intellect. And so it's it's actually a greater experience to be able to use to be able to balance the emotions properly it, it's it's like total honesty when you can be honest with your feelings you don't have to be an emotional person but the the proper balance is something i'm finding and um so i can't remember exactly where i was going with that <laughs> but i guess that's basically what i wanted to to share with that uh that oh yeah about the articles so there are a lot of articles i've written and I will put them up when I'm when I'm when I'm able to. I have to finish a few more, and uh, some articles I actually don't feel quite right about putting them on my blog yet. I feel like there's a proper timing, so um, I guess what I need to just ask everybody if they're interested in hearing more of my story. Um, this next this year, I'll be making a point to get more out there that has already been written. And as for a book, man. <laughs> I've written enough for a book, but it's it's tough stuff. It's it's easier for me just to throw stuff up on my blog when I can. So I just I just it's a day at a time for me, really, day at a right. time. Well, I'll tell you, even with um, you know, all the articles that you've written and published on your blog, even if you just put those and uh, compiled them and then just wrote a real quick intro. Uh, that would be a book in itself, and it would be something that would be, you know, because a lot of people like to read books in hard form. Um, it might be something that could reach uh, a greater audience. And, um, you know, just keep that in mind, because if you ever would like to or would need help on some a project like that, mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing books, you know, for a very long time. A oh, long true. time, and I could certainly help. And it would be something that, uh, you could get out in really uh, a month just with uh, your all of the information that you have on wow. your blogs. But you uh, know, with my story, it's uh, part of the problem is that it isn't just a, a third dimensional story. You know, there's stuff in my life that was happening. Like there's the facade of my my life. It was like an, it looked like a normal life, everyday life. Mm -hmm. But yet, I had a bunch of stuff going on at the same time. <laughs> so, I mean, when people listen to my, the uh, recordings that Daniel and I did, there, I, I think that there's seven, seven uh, groups of recordings. It, did, it didn't even cover, it only covered part of my story and some of the highlights. There's stuff we never had brought out that we were wondering even at that time, are people going to be ready to hear it? You know, it was hard enough to hear what I had already, what Daniel and I brought out on the, uh, on the series he and I did. And yet there was a whole other dimension of that has to do with mind control that happens outside of the body and many levels of that. It's just out of this world. But since I since then, was it two or three years ago, some of that information is actually coming out. Other people are starting to put some of that information out themselves. So um, that won't be so hard, but it's just that, you know, trying to tell my story, it can be kind of confusing <laughs> and it, it's uh to me, it sometimes it gets overwhelming <laughs> to, mm -hmm. I, to even just try. But I, uh, thank I, I can imagine. Go ahead. But well, and I, I appreciate you offering. Yeah. You know, to, to to help me with that. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And certainly, like, uh, even with the one article that you 
uh, shared on Henry Macau's website talking about, you know, your remembrances of your childhood and the sexual abuse you you underwent. And, I mean, those kind of topics are so heavy. Is even the listening audience uh, ready or even prepared to to handle and to be able to digest those kind of things? But, uh, but I think that, you know, especially with all the stuff that has come out with the Catholic priesthood and their involvement and now all the... Uh, elitists and their involvement in the pedophilia, that certainly you would not be able to be uh, 100% graphic in the experiences, but that they're more apt to be able to digest uh, those kind of things more so than ever before. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, and, and it's more believable now because of the, uh, the other confirmations that have come out. Go ahead. Yeah, there's some, uh, like, uh, Savali. Was a right. trailblazer? I call them. Tra- Can you hear me? Yes. Uh huh. I call. Uh, I call them trailblazers. Svali was a trailblazer. Another one. Some people have heard of her. Some haven't. It's Lauren Stratford. Um, Johanna Michelson helped her. Johanna Michelson also helped me. Um, that you know, we'll get more get into that part of the story sometime, um, probably on your program here. But um, Lauren Stratford wrote a book called Satan's Underground. And uh, not only was Lauren, do I totally believe Lauren, she helped me too um, through Johanna Michelson. But she, she literally died of a broken heart. Oh, wow. And it, it's because th- being a trailblazer is not easy. But what she did paved the way for people, other people to come forth with stories like hers. So um, I think of her often and though she suffered a lot and she suffered even more maybe even more so after she put her story out because people don't the the, the evil doers don't want the truth so right. exposed they don't want those they don't want to be exposed and she exposed them she spelled it out she was a woman of great courage and because of what she did many people have been helped and will continue to be helped so i i'm i'm truly truly thankful for her and other other trailblazers like her well, likewise yourself uh, in what you are doing, you are also setting the premise for others to be able to find the courage and to empower themselves in similar manner to share their testimony. And so for that, uh, all of us applaud you and thank you um, for your commitment to the truth and sharing You know how it is that you not only came out but also came to the knowledge uh, and the relationship with with Christ and how that has protected you over the years because certainly uh, without that and with what you have, you know, are up against, the odds you are up against, um, that you could easily have, have been stopped and um, snuffed out in some way so that the you couldn't do what what you do. Absolutely true. <laughs> well, it's, uh, um, go, ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to um, interject for a moment uh, to give your listeners a little bit of background in order to understand some of the stuff that Carolyn is going to share. And I'm actually going to come back, if it's okay with her, to a point that you were beginning to make um, because it's uh, quite revelatory. But uh, when we're talking about someone like Carolyn, uh, she'll use terms like memories that I recovered. Why would someone use language like that? Well, the answer is is that there's a relationship, and and this is just from a scientific standpoint, between the amygdala and the hippocampus in the brain. They have this relationship for memory storage, and, and most memory is stored as what's called narrative memory. And narrative memory is stored as arousal is presented to the amygdala, and then communicated to the hippocampus, which records basically to the temporal cortex. That's how most memory goes. And there's different levels of arousal, which depend upon the situation, circumstances, and type of information a person is being presented with. But when a person is traumatized, or there is such an excitation of the amygdala due to circumstances being presented, there is no recording of what is called narrative memory by the hippocampus. In, instead, 
it is uh, completely shut down and all of the data that's coming in becomes stored as physical sensations and emotions. It actually gets trapped. Um, so when people go through highly traumatic things, like the kind of ritual abuse that people that are part of New World Order groups are subjected to, uh, many of those memories will not be available to them until they are able to get past what are known as amnesic barriers or walls, which can involve you know, going through the physical sensations that were present when the memory was recorded because it is actually stored as physical sensation, emotions, so on on and so forth. Um, and, you know, th this leads to what is known as dissociative identity disorder, which is endemic to any person that has really been uh, used by some of these groups because by creating trauma, they are able to do something they call splitting the core, which creates on what's known as a dissociative spectrum, maximal dissociation leading to the uh, the creation of what's known as a dissociated part or alternate personality. And these are known as alters. And with the recording, the, the way it works is many of the alters within a person will actually have those memories that didn't get written to the temporal cortex during the events under which they were created. Um, and it creates quite a complex problem. Uh, this is what someone like Carol and has to overcome. Now, when you were beginning, uh, Zen, to get into some of the stuff on the, well, the sexual side of things, you know, uh, me, Carolyn and I discovered a really cool individual uh, called Candy. And I don't know, I, I'm just going to leave it at that, Carolyn, if you want to get into some of the information surrounding her, because you, you've really never been public with that part of your story. If not, you know, obviously you don't have to share anything, but um, I just thought that that would be quite fitting uh, based on the way yeah. this started. Well, definitely uh, an interesting situation. <laughs> um, Candy, actually, um, we kind of call her Candace now. She was programmed, it was during a time in my life in the early 70s when I suspected something was happening but I didn't know it appeared by all appearances that nothing really was happening in my life except that I'd get in my car in the morning and find out I had like my gas tanks on empty when maybe the night before it was like three quarters of a tank and I kept thinking somebody was siphoning gas out of my car um, I always hated the telephone couldn't stand to hear it ring and uh, I know what that's from now. <laughs> I had hmm. people or, or uh, plainclothes policemen coming to my window in the middle of the night, but I already knew they were there. And I, it's like I woke up thinking somebody could be looking through my window right now and shining a flashlight. And I would wake up and look, and all of a sudden I'd see a flashlight coming from a distance. I had uh, just like st very, very, very strange things happening to me that made no sense whatsoever. The FBI was after me, <laughs> I mean, for real, and trying to recruit me, but in uh, pressuring me in some way, but I knew there, there was more going on. I didn't know what it was. Well, um, and actually one altar came forward at early on, and it's actually a male altar, but he was, it, it turns out, I, it was, I was contracted out to the mob is what happened and the male altar was created I, I remember it's like photographic memory now the memories all came back I the names match up to people I've checked it out even the, the people in the mob the nicknames and you know in real life I actually was very close I went to I went to school with a lot of the the mob kids and was like family <laughs> to some of the mob people and yet it didn't it didn't connect that more was going on but there was so basically so what happened was that there was a part of me that was it, it was okay I was contracted out for the mob for about four years before the next the section that they had planned for me and a, an altar was created that they named candy 
And the male altar was the protector of me and Candy. And Candy was a called a Monroe model. Was, in fact, what I was told is she was a better Monroe than Marilyn Monroe. Yet she was, okay, she was trained more as like an escort mainly for one person. But she was uh, programmed to be the ears and the eyes for whoever she was with so that no one would know that she was smart enough to know what was going on. So she actually carried a lot of important information and was able to deliver it to somebody else or actually spy, find out information. So she was a key person, which was another reason I think that there were other, that there were people tracking me <laughs> and trying to find out what I know. So in, in fact, there was a time where I had been, someone actually was trying to get me involved in some illegal activity that was going on. It was some car theft and transferring drugs. And I was supposed to be an escort. Well, the person that took me there, okay, the people seemed to know who I was. I didn't know who they were. And when they realized I didn't know who they were, they all, they got together and got real hush hush and kind of scared and then sent me away real quick. And that was it. But, you know, and I wonder what was that all about? So an interesting part here about candy is that I knew she existed. I mean, I found out that she, that she existed. Um, she has a lot of good qualities. And, in fact, she and I have, have integrated, and which is, which is helping me, helping me now because she has some good qualities that's been helpful in my life now. But I found a picture by accident on the Internet <laughs> that was a picture of me with people I didn't even know. This, I, I, I just, it just kind of freaked me out. You know, what would you think if you find a picture of yourself right. and, and you're thinking, first of all, it's like, is that, that's got to be a twin. That can't be me. I don't know those people. What am I doing with them? I'm not even dressed like I usually dress. <laughs> it's like, and then I realized. Hold on, me. Hold yes. on. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen. And as I uh, have as guests with me this evening, both Dan Duvall and Carolyn Hamlet. Before we went to the break, Carolyn, you were speaking about Candace or Candy, and I'm guessing that this was one of your um, alternate personalities and uh, that you said you had been contracted by the mob. Can you tell us uh, what you were contracted for? And also, uh, I guess like the Mata Hari, sort of spy kind of thing. Um, but also, if you would, um, lead us into uh, an explanation of the organization and the work of Alice Bailey in um, setting up the organization and the plan. Okay. Um, I want to go back uh, real quick. I mentioned about the gas yeah, in my take car. Some, yes. Um, what I'm, the reason I brought that up was okay the uh the uh, protector altar that i had these are okay there's a core i'm the core and two large parts of me are candace and another is andrew andrew was used for the mob by uh for different for for other things and uh, one of the things andrew did was it wasn't me that answered the telephone when it would ring when the programmer would call it would be andrew the phone would ring, uh, Andrew would switch on, become me, and actually, you know, take take the front and answer the call, take the information down, or Andrew had it already programmed into him time-wise if, we if I was supposed to be at a certain place at a certain time. So um, he, it was, I would drive my car, so in, like in the middle of the night, I wouldn't remember, but it would be Andrew <laughs> that would be driving it. That's why I didn't have gas in my car in the morning. So uh, that all made sense. And the fact that he was the one who answered the telephone call, he was the one who would let me know if there was someone coming after me so that either he would take charge uh, 
and protect me or he would let me know so that I could take care, that I would know what to do to handle myself and to be safe. So that was one of his jobs. So, um, yeah, Candy, Candy would sit in sometimes on card games and be the eyes and ears and go with the boss, what they called them. There are a couple of people that were called the boss, go with the boss, different places. Sometimes the boss would send Candy to be with someone that if, if it's like, okay, something, something about me that's always been a plus since I've been a, a small child is that I, I could always sniff out a rat. That's what they call it. I could sniff out a rat, even as a tiny, as a little girl, like five years old. One of some of the stuff they used me for was to that that I could tell. I had the ability to be able to tell if someone was telling the truth or not, or if they were to be trusted or not. So I would even even as Candace, I was sent in to. I, I had the ability to make people feel at ease, to feel comfortable to feel good around me and to relax. That was one of the things I was trained in, but Candace especially was programmed for that. So when Candace helped people relax, then they let their guard down. Candace could get information that they didn't know that Candace was able to comprehend and retain. Candace would go back and report it. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, actually, I'm laughing because it's it's a nervous laugh. When I laugh, people criticize me sometimes because I laugh inappropriately. I'm telling you now that uh, I do laugh at inappropriately, but because but it's not because something's funny. It's it's uh, it's a nervous laugh. So um, that's some of that's some of the ways Candace was used, and also um, not so much sexually like passed around, but with some people. I mean, sec- Candy was trained as as a, a sexual model and was trained to do certain things, but also involves a type of witchcraft and it's like a sexual type of witchcraft. And, uh, so there's a lot that I've had to renounce involving that. Yes. <laughs> okay. So getting into the plan and the organization and, and the organization, I began calling it the organization Probably, I don't know, 20 years ago, people kept asking me, you know, that they, they would want me to tell them about some of my background when I was trying to explain it. This is when a few people were starting to get, they, they were starting to hear about the New World Order. And uh, I was trying to tell them what my background was and they would say, well, what, what club or what secret society did you come out of? What, what was the name of? what you came out of. And I said, they don't have a name. <laughs> I mean, they absolutely don't have a name. So I started calling it the organization because it involves this physical earth. It involves the supernatural. It involves many different realms, many different beings in the supernatural. It involves numerous hierarchies <laughs> on the earth and in the supernatural. And each hierarchy has so many levels that can enter, that can act independently of each other. They're all contained. It's like hierarchies within hierarchies. And they're so well organized and orchestrated, running like a well-oiled machine. The best thing I could describe it as was the organization. The organization has an agenda. They have many, many, many agendas within the main agenda. And it all centers around planet Earth. And humanity, I'll tell you this now, humanity is much different than most people know. And, uh, I mean, Christians don't even know. They, they don't get it yet. So a lot of people that are not Christians actually get it more about this, the spiritual side of humanity that Christians don't, that a lot of Christians don't get yet. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that some of this group that, that is listening tonight will be able to understand where I'm coming from because maybe they already understand some of the supernatural. Um, that's what I was raised in. With the, the super, To me, it was a child, the supernatural and the natural were one and the same. In fact, the supernatural was, to me, was my reality more so than the physical. 
because that's mainly where my teachers existed. And my physical teachers also took orders from the supernatural. So the plan is what the, the, the term the plan became more popular through Alice A. Bailey. Uh, from Madame Blavatsky and Alice Bailey and okay like the uh, the ascended masters have had had names for themselves throughout throughout the centuries you know thousands of years and they okay th with this last I don't know a couple of hundred years they what they've called it is the plan and although this plan is thousands of years old and it's the same beings that have made this plan. Let me make it clear. There are two separate plans. I, gr I lived my entire life up until, I guess I was around 33 years old. I lived that entire time believing there was one plan, that I served the plan of God, the creator of the universe, the righteous creator of the universe, until I was shown and, I mean, it was hard for me to want to believe it, but this is what illumination is. When you get to the top of the organization, what I call the organization, you find out exactly what their plan is all about. It's not about ev evolving, spirit, uh, like physical or spiritual evolution. It's devolution. <laughs> they hmm. tell you exactly who they are in order for me to understand exactly who they are, they had to show me who Jesus Christ is. And, man, I could, I could talk to you, I could probably talk to you for hours about what the difference I know of their Christ or Christ's compared to the Bible, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you that if you read the Bible, you read the New Testament, Jesus Christ, he isn't, the Christ isn't the avatar. Jesus Christ is, is exactly who he says he is in the Bible. God has a plan. There are two plans. God, the creator of the universe, has one plan. Humanity is far superior than any of these ascended masters that are trying to dupe people into thinking that the plan is God's plan to elevate humanity spiritually. So I grew up from, oh, the early, it was, I was born in 1953. My mom served the plan back in, she was recruited when, in 1941. She was instrumental in helping with the United Nations, getting that set up. If you don't, if you, okay, let me tell you that the New World Order, this is what a lot of people don't get. The pl that people will be smart enough to realize that there's a lot going on in this world, that there's there's a, lots of agendas, there's lots of conspiracies, it's conspiracy facts. There's, there's a main agenda. You can look at the physical third dimensional world and you can see that there's obviously a move toward a global order. And in the midst of all this, a lot of the people are aware and realize that the new world order is not a good thing. You know, you look at the globalists, the type of people that are, are pushing for this thing. They're, they're not good people. They're, they're Satanist. They, they won't say they are. Some of them will claim to be Luciferian. But the top people, they're Satanists. There's a top level that knows that Lucifer is Satan. And that's what, I'm, that's what I was getting at. Is I, I had, they wanted, they promised me. They promised me a lot. They promised me a uh, place of position in, in their new world order. And this is not just a new world order of global global order for people. This is a spiritual thing. They're bringing in Lucifer, who is Satan, bringing in his government. They've been working on this for many years, making hybrids, bringing in their, their elite, their most powerful, making bodies for them. Before I left the organization, this is what I was helping them do. This is the real deal. So... I, I want people and, to understand that the that the New World Order is authored by the Ascended Masters, and the plan is Satan's plan. It's not God the Creator. That we are actually we are at humanity is created. Our our um, spiritual beings, our spirit beings, are something very very special, different than anything any of other any God's creations. 
So we're like chips off the old block. And the Ascended Masters don't want you to know that. You don't need to go through an Ascended Master. There is only one way. I'm telling you the truth. There is one way, and it's the truth that Jesus Christ is that way. God only needed one way. Mm-hmm. So um, I think you wanted to say something, Zen. Uh, I think Dan was going to say something, but uh, oh. I-, I wanted to make this real quick comment before you do, Dan. Uh, so basically you're saying that the Ascended Masters... Um, even though people believe that they are the enlightened ones, the illumined ones of the the quote unquote new age, that they are really demons and they're deceiving us and they're deceiving humanity really to accept Lucifer as God. Yes. And they're, um, okay. I grew up, I was schooled by them. My entire life, I was schooled by them. The same ascended masters that you hear, that you read about, with uh, Alice Bailey and Madame Blavatsky. In fact, uh, the Master DK. I mean, I knew these guys. I don't. I worked directly with them. I know them, and I can tell you for a fact they are not what they claim to be. So, and I know, I know the spirit of God, the Creator of the universe, can show me. They, he can show everyone that really wants to know that he can show them in their spirit that I'm telling the truth. If you read the Bible and you really want, if you're really a truth seeker, then you will get the truth, and you won't, and it, you will see that the the ascended masters are not who they say they are. Yeah, see, this is a very important and key point because, um, as I stated. Uh, to you earlier, uh, predominantly this radio network, Revolution Radio, um, they are caught up in what I believe to be the strong delusion in that a lot of people believe the ancient aliens to be the creators of humanity. And they look to the ascended masters to be the, you know, the saviors of humanity. um, And they are ready and ripe to buy into the whole thing that the aliens are our gods, the Sumerians, the Anunnaki, that they are our gods, our creators, and that they are also going to be the saviors of humanity. And so that's why I've been trying to warn against such deception for a very long time. Uh, Let's go to Dan, because I think he wanted to to share a comment. Dan? Well, yes. And, you know, Carolyn is nailing a lot of things on the head of people. They need to elevate their understanding Zen of what the last days actually means. Um, there is a battle of kingdoms. Right. It's a battle of kingdoms and a battle of governments. And it's not Russia versus the U.S. It's the kingdom of darkness versus the kingdom of God. Absolutely. And you have humans that are interfaced throughout the world with one kingdom and humans that are interfaced with the other. And it is... Uh, unfortunate that what many people do not understand, even those that consider themselves Christians, um, that they are, in fact, before they die, interfacing with what is called the kingdom of God and uh, connected to that spiritual realm. Uh, Carolyn was one of those that was connected to the other spiritual realm kingdom and government. And um, that conflict is playing out in the world before our eyes, leading up to a a moment most of us consider to be the second coming of Jesus Christ. But one of the major lies uh, that the proponents of the kingdom of darkness and that government maintain is that they are the solution for man's ascendance to divine nature. That's what they maintain. You will be enlightened. You will ascend. But the God of the Bible, what many believers don't understand, said that in 2 Peter 1, 4, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption which is in the world through lust. And what believers don't understand, Zen, this is one of my big things, is that, you know, God has given us promises that we would be partakers of the divine nature that is his nature. So the idea that ascended masters are offering something of value is 
flawed. It, it, it were, at least it's in direct contradiction to what the Bible states. And the only way to get what the Bible states, which is that connection to God's divine nature, the creator God, is through Jesus Christ. And that's one of the things Carolyn is trying to communicate. Uh, she wasn't connected to um, or actively connecting to the person Jesus Christ while she was in the organization, but she switched sides. And um, this is, this is a, a big thing because when people, I believe, uh, begin to understand that, you know, going after a divine nature through these occult means, uh, ascended masters, enlightenment, these kinds of ideas, uh, w when they consider that versus what God of the Bible has actually offered, what they'll find is that, you know, uh, they're being lied to, that there is a real and true divine nature that is being offered to them, and it doesn't come with the trauma and the bondage and the evil and wickedness and uh, the mind control that is being uh, leveraged against all those that are signing up with these ascended masters. Right. And there's a, a, one other aspect that is very important and profound because a lot of the New Age, as far as the law of attraction and things that, you know, as far as how to manifest, those things are true but they demote Christ as being one of these ascended masters or that he was just a special person that um, became um, a walk-in for one of these ascended masters or one of these enlightened beings. And so a lot of what they will teach as far as um, you know, the, even the things to do with the, you know, our ancient past or ancient mysteries can be true, but you know that five percent leaven is what will cost you your soul. Because to deny Christ is to have him to deny you, and he is the way and the truth and the life. And as Carolyn was stating earlier, um, he it, it came into the flesh in order to show us an example to us the way home, and and to show us that he is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and that. He can trump death uh, and also all of the other so-called gods, the pagan gods, which are nothing more than the following, fallen angels parading as God, um, and that you know he is a God incarnate in the flesh, and he can do you know offer salvation to whom he chooses to offer it to. And that um, that's the whole key, because none of these other pagan gods or deities or ascended masters can do that. They cannot offer you eternal life, salvation, uh, a return to our first estate. They can promise you enlightenment or things of that nature, which is nothing more than Christ within us because that is the connecting link to source. That is God within us. That's what is our spirit, um, that part of us that gives our flesh consciousness, uh, warms our breath, gives us a uh, touch and sensation and the, the, the senses. But, you know, that is uh, the part of us that can inherit eternal inheritance, but it's only through allegiance to him and accepting the grace that he has offered to us in dying on the cross and giving us a forgiveness of sins and a chance to, you know, return... Um, to our first estate through him. And, and that's the thing that they don't teach you or don't want you to know. Um, Carolyn? Absolutely. Um, there are a few things that that I, I could say. Uh, hold on, Carolyn. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, we'll be, it'll be just a few minutes. Uh, hold on, everyone. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is Momentary Zen. And I have as guests with me Dan Duvall and Carolyn Hamlet. Uh, I do want to remind everybody that Revolution Radio is the largest corporate-free, commercial-free uh, radio network on the Internet and on the planet. And that, In order for us to continue doing what we do and sharing the information that we share and utilizing it as a platform of truth, we do need your monetary support in whatever ways you can share it with us and uh, to not 
put yourself out in any way if you cannot afford to. But certainly those of you that can, please, for the price of a Happy Meal, if you eat at McDonald's, which I don't, but uh, if you, you know, for the price of one meal, you can buy access to the archives and download in MP3 form shows going back to last year of all the various hosts on both Studio A and Studio B, and you can upload them to your iPad, uh, iPod, and burn them to disc and not have to listen to uh, commercials, uh, radio, or anything of that nature. And um, we appreciate your doing so in advance. Um, Carolyn, I, before we went to break, we were talking about the, the plan and the organization. And I uh, wanted to also get you to, if you would, um, comment on your experience in the heavenlies as far as your memories of pre-existence and if you could tie us into um, or let us know anything that you were told by the ascended masters as to how humanity got here uh, who the you know the what people call the dracos or reptilians or the nephilim um, who they are and also how they got here, any, any information along those lines? Well, whatever information I give, I talk about, is not going to be much compared to what I know. So, um, yeah, sure. I'll, oh. I'll just start talking, I guess. Okay, great. Um, something that's carried me through my entire life, um, one of my favorite things to think about, and it actually makes me homesick, but has helped me through and helped me well well I know that the our righteous creator which I call heavenly father um I know he wanted me to remember my pre-existence and he has other people that are here on on the earth at this time that also remember the pre-existence and that's not that's not an accident he intended that it's because he does have a plan and um, what I remember, it may not be as great detail like the Zen remembers, but what I, what I remember was that, at least in the area, I call it the heavenlies, I was an adult. Uh, I was an adult female. There were males and females there. Okay, now the reason I, I even like to tell people about this is because I am hoping that it, that it will stir up within people's beings a, a remembrance that they will they will realize that 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 memory is also in them it'll start stirring it up and they may think yes i think i remember that because when you get to earth it's okay children are more sensitive to the supernatural than adults and as they get older they lose that it's like they forget where they came from so uh, in the organization I came from they they knew this so they encouraged me uh, my physical beat my physical t uh, teachers mentors as well as in, in the supernatural they made sure I would remember things but something that maybe they wouldn't have wanted me to remember but I did was being in the heavenlies before I was born and what I remember everything in that place was energized by the presence of God. Everything was beautiful. It was holy. The gra every, the colors were more vibrant than on earth. It's like everything is black and white compared to what's in the heavenlies. There is, it's just a completely fulfilling feeling. Fulf uh, just love. Everyone loves one another. It's the sun is God himself. There is no real sun. I don't remember any day, any darkness. It was total light. I couldn't see God's face. None of us could see him, but he was so present that we could almost see his face, almost see his features, but we felt him everywhere. He surrounded us. He was in our, in being every blade of grass, every flower was his energy and his presence and everything gloried. It actually praised him. And, you know, praise, the word praise probably irritates some people 
they don't really understand. I mean, maybe they've heard some cre- some Christians just u- overuse that term, or they feel like it's been overused. Uh, that's the only word I know to say is to describe it as like praise because, okay, imagine the presence of God energizing something so much that it would be like a pressure cooker. If they were not able to praise and the glory and the beauty of everything that is of God, they would just burst, you know, blow apart. So everything is is receiving and being fed the presence of God, his energy, his love, all that he is. And yet it's it's inhaling him and exhaling it. And as it exhales, it's like it's music. It's it's uh everything is like singing and music and praise because the presence of God is praise. It's it, 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 I don't know how how to describe it really. It's you just can't help but the joyousness is praise. So that's what the heavenlies was the heavenlies was like. Um, just real quick, just an interjection here. If someone wants to go to the Bible and look up the names of God, there's many names of God. They all are him. They all are an aspect of him, but it's one God. He's many things, many, many, many things, wonderful things. So, okay, but going back to the heavenlies, I was... Um, Okay, in my area, we all wore white white robes. Everything was bright and shining, bright colors. We wore white robes, and I, I had, I heard my name called. Okay, we're all given spiritual names. When God creates us, we all have different names. That is the essence of our entire being. That He created the name. It's for He created the name for us, and our name means everything that we are. It's what He created us to be. He has a plan for each and every one of us. He loves each one of us more than anybody can ever imagine. So um, just I want people to think about that. But they have a name. Everybody's special to God. He, his fingerprint is on each of us. Okay, so going back to um, the remembrance of I heard God call my name. He, I was, okay, I was a report somewhere. I, I reported to the place. There was a mentor there who was uh, an angel. I, he didn't have wings, but the interesting thing is he's appeared to me in my life several different times here on earth as, as to save me or to, to give me instruction. And he also appeared to a friend of mine when I was in trouble and my life was in danger and actually told her where to find me and to help me. And if he hadn't done that and she hadn't found me, I, I wouldn't be here now. But this particular angel was the mediator and talking we they were working with talking with god it was like a, um basically what it was was i was asked to go on a mission it sounds weird but i'm not the only one that's reported this what god showed me was three different types of lifetimes i could have um he said i didn't have to go i could stay where i could stay there but that he was sending a group of people or a group of us to earth at, at a certain time period because it was the end of his plan and that we were needed and he would be using us to orchestrate his plan and to help people. Okay, so he ha- th- this particular mission was designed specifically for someone of my personality. I was told I didn't have to take it. Someone else could, but God actually was hoping that I would take it and so anyway he showed me I remember seeing the different lifetimes you know one was just a really easy kind of a thing or and then there was a medium one I can remember seeing families and I I still have those memories and then he showed me the difficult one he said now this is the lifetime that I'm talking about this is more like three lifetimes in one what one person would live in one lifetime, it would take three lifetimes of experience to live this one particular life. He said, this is the one I'm talking about. Would you take it? And um, I felt strong and I wanted to, I wanted to please him. I was excited about God's plan. And I said, yes, I will take it. And I can remember he was happy. Um, my mentor was happy. They told me, or the God told me, that it was going to be very difficult. He would have to step in throughout my life to help me 
because it was going to be hard. And I actually was, remember feeling kind of cocky and thinking, yeah, right, uh, I can do it. It's because in my mind, if I've ever thought I can do something, my determination helped me do it. I would think, okay, I'll do it. No sweat. Well, I found I was wrong. <laughs> Life here on earth, you know, you get dirty. It isn't as easy as you think it is. And it's not fun losing innocence. And and yet, you know, I know now God's plan is there's a risk when we leave the heavenlies. There is a risk. We may not make it back. But God was going to, I okay, we have free will. And I have done my very best, and I don't feel like it's been good enough, but it's it's the best I can do. And I am thankful for God's help because he has helped me. He has saved me. He has stepped into my life at numerous times to save my life. And if it wasn't for, for him stepping in, I would be dead. And I, I honestly believe, I know for a fact that God put me in the family that I was born into, put me in that bloodline for a specific purpose so that I could know what it was like from the enemy territory, know their plan, and come out and um, and tell you about God, the truth, God's plan. Yeah, absolutely. I, I fully uh, agree with you, and it was similar for me, even though I don't have the exact details. Um, but my feeling of pre-existence is similar to, you know, the whole quote uh, of Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, verse 4 and 5, where the word of the Lord goes to him and tells him, I knew you before you were ever in the womb of your mother. I had foreordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Uh, I absolutely feel um, that this is the final generation and that many are here to for this particular time and that have very important missions and that a lot of people um, are not aware or have that remembrance and because they don't they are not living up to their um, their purpose and haven't awakened to that and so I feel like those of us that have and and are similar to what you're doing that we're here to, to spark, to pique that interest in people so that they can have that recognition of who they are and why they're here and then uh, accept the responsibility and to fulfill their true purpose and to live for that the the kingdom and not just the for the matrix and the illusion of the whole nine to five, the American dream, materialism, buying a bunch of stuff and you know that kind of thing because um even though we have to survive in the matrix and live in this world um it, it shouldn't take precedence over the spiritual aspects of what we're here to accomplish and that, that's the thing that most people get so caught up in the matrix that they don't give any focus or any attention to anything other than the carnal aspects of of world, um, let me get Dan to comment on this, and then we'll go back to you, Carolyn. Well, yeah, uh, thank you, Zen. And yeah, I just wanted to say a couple things. Um, one, yeah, you know, you guys are not the only ones, and I work with a number of survivors, uh, different people around the world, um, with similar stories to Carolyn's uh, from different parts of the planet things it's just amazing to know what the devil is up to on so many different fronts but i do want to say a few things in response to what carolyn has said you know there are survivors that are going to listen to a testimony like carolyn's and immediately if they recognize what is in their past go into uh, a sort of disdain um, because they might say, well, I hear everything you're saying, Carolyn. I identify with you, but I didn't get a choice. I don't remember being sent by God. I don't remember having the option. And I just want to encourage people. God has a reason for what he does, what he allows people to remember. And it's all part of his plan. It doesn't mean 
necessarily that if any person does not have remembrance of being sent on a mission here, that God has any less of a plan for them or any less redemption or healing for them or any less liberty or freedom for them in his provision or any less respect for them. Um, God simply does what he wants. And, uh, but he is an ever-present help in time of need. He is a healer. He is a redeemer. And he is a just God. And he does bring justice to any person that has called upon the name of the Lord and sought out his purpose for their lives. And so I just want to encourage people um, listening to a testimony like Carolyn's that identify with her story, but do not necessarily identify with the assignment side of things. Um, I know for me personally, here I find myself at the front lines of a lot of things. And you know what? I do not remember getting my assignment before I was born. Yet, during my life, I have had many conversations with the Lord, with Jesus Christ. I have seen areas of the heavenlies. And it's... um, it's just been the way that God has worked in my life. And so that's um, all I wanted to say on this subject for now. Well, I you. think that's very important what you said, uh, Dan, because a lot of people have asked me, you know, how do I come to such remembrance? How do I uh, access such uh, memories? And, you know, I, I think it all has to do with, it, you know, some people are led to such remembrance and, Others aren't, but not to be discouraged if you are not. Um, just seek earnestly and persistently, and hopefully you will be uh, granted such insight. But if not, don't be discouraged. Just always um, go about as far as your relationship with the Most High. Uh, Carolyn, we've got two questions from the chat room. Um, and we're almost to break, so you'll probably have to answer these when we return. Um, but anyways, uh, Thunder asks, uh, if she was given any specifics on Planet X or on the dark star brown dwarf in our solar system, and then um, Olive asks, have you read it, the excluded books of the Bible, such as the Nagamati Codices and things of that nature? We've, we okay. spent uh, like five minutes till break, so. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things I know about and were told about and a lot that I wasn't. And that, that's the way it works in organization. I did get out knowing quite a bit about a lot of different areas, but Planet X was something that I was never told. I was ne- They never mentioned anything about Planet X. I heard a lot of other stuff, but not Planet X. Uh, perhaps my mom knew something about it, but all that information she had died with her back in 1971. I wish she was alive today because um, no doubt <laughs> she would have been quite a threat to the organization. Um, you talk about the Nag Hammadi. Um, we had books when I was a little girl. I looked at them. I don't remember at this point right now. I don't remember anything about them other than the fact that we had that information. Now, if somebody wanted to specifically asked me a question that had to do with some of the ancient information, I might be able to talk about that. You know, sometimes I'll know information that might be within books that I don't know it's in a book, but I might know the information. Okay, so well, I'm sorry if that's... The, um, <laughs> you know how the Nakamati that speaks about the archons and then Arizona Wilder in her testimony she talked about how the uh, the elites are possessed by um, the reptilians or, or you know these dragon like beings uh, there's seraphim angels uh, and I've heard you and Daniel talk about walk-ins um, so could you comment on that or talk about that a little bit well that's a pretty extensive subject also <laughs> Uh, it, it, well, one of my alters knows more about reptilians than I do. Yeah. That I consciously, I consciously do, and that particular one, pretty much said it all ends here on planet Earth, that there's different species of of uh, reptilians. I 
personally don't remember seeing reptilians, but I, I, I was told that when I was a very, very little girl, that my bloodline and actually the bloodlines I came from were not human and that we were physically different than humans and superior and uh, spiritually superior. We also apparently were, some of us are able to shape shift and that of course happens. It's, it's like, um, mainly it hap- you need to have that attachment to the supernatural and it is a genetic thing and it's a um, something at least in my bloodline is inherited from almost like a like like you do like a, a kingship or it's like a scepter is passed down from one generation to another you inherit that and the some of the abilities that you can be possessed by a high demon once what demons that have great authority in the, in Satan's kingdom there's different types of beings in Satan's spiritual hierarchy and see that's gosh i could go all over <laughs> with this topic but it's like there are different well, types not all of them look human and yeah and some of them possess people some Daniel, of them don't i think daniel was uh at whatever you no, get no. let 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 carolyn finish and then i'll okay go. all right we're all, we're one minute out from break so go ahead carolyn okay and then i ought to be then let daniel um Gosh, I'm just come back. rattling along here. <laughs> yeah, no, um, please. We appreciate the information. Um, well, there were light beings. Some of them, some of the most powerful that I had. Part of my job at the toward the end in 1984 and 80, 85 had to do with bringing light beings in from Mark Taurus. And uh, that's all. I just called them light beings, and they called themselves Opportunos. They would they they preferred to appear as humans once they got here, and they created their own bodies. Now there are ones that will walk in and actually change a human body to suit how they want. You know, genetically can change it. And there's just oh, there's so many ways that Satan's organization is infiltrating humanity, and they're making like there's making superhumans. So. Um, they aren't just using bloodline people anymore, but it's easier to use bloodliners. You know, the ones that they've actually had through the centuries. I've I've told that it isn't it isn't just you know Illuminati. It's it's uh, bloodlines that have that have been here for a long time. They've they've actually. All right, thanks. hold on, everyone. We'll be right back for final segment. Hold on. Uh, welcome back, everybody, for final segment. Uh, I want to read just a real quick passage and then get both Daniel and Carolyn to comment on this. I think uh, if you've not heard this, Carolyn, you'll find it very interesting, as likewise you, you Daniel. Um, it, it says this, He wanted my friend to secretly prove once and for all if this was true or not. The subject claimed that his extended family and their cousins, who are kings, queens, princesses and princesses, as well as leaders of industry and banking worldwide, believe they are children of an otherworldly race of humanoid beings. He'd been taught by his tutors that once upon a time, his ancestors had fallen to earth after some cosmic calamity in the time before the garden. He believed that while their ancestral mother was Eve, their ancestral father was not Adam. He was torn to know if a child of Cain was actually genetically different and whether he could be saved. He thought of the Vatican's pronouncement that the aliens are our cousins and the Vishnu teachings of a time when gods flew in spaceships and destroyed whole cities in a single blast. He even had notes about Elijah being caught up in a chariot of fire. Maybe he had misread or misunderstood the entire history of the Bible. Maybe from Genesis to Revelation, it was about some far more tangible and real fallen angel alien cousins than the ghost-like destroying angels he'd always pictured in his imagination. One final paragraph. 
Um, they once reigned from Olympus and were pharaohs. Whatever the real truth of their history, their belief is the driver of their actions. Being the true believers they are, they will continue to operate in accordance with their belief and the laws of alien Darwinian type survival. That's why they interbreed to maintain the purity of the bloodline. That's why they secretly meet and connive to pass power between themselves. And that's why they must fool the rest of mankind into wars of self-destruction and debt so that we may be forever enslaved to their lusts on this prison planet till death do us part. More than afraid, they know in their hearts that it is a fight for survival. The fight for survival. Uh, Daniel, let me get you to comment on that, and then uh, we'll go to Carolyn, because there was one other comment in the chat room that I want to share with her. Daniel, you there? Uh, Daniel had dropped off, so he, he missed what I just read, Carolyn. So I'm going to just go ahead and go to you, um, and I want to uh, give you this comment from the chat room. Um, Mer Bailey says, Carolyn knows about walk-ins, um, th the walk-throughs, too. Ruth Montgomery, for one, wrote that spirits are drawn to those in power. And so, if you would, can you comment on what I read and also the comment from Mer Bailey in the, the chat room? And then we'll go to Dan, because I, I know he wanted to share something before we went to break. Um, what you read, I could pretty much take it sentence by sentence <laughs> and comment about it. It's like I can relate to pretty much everything that you that you read from mm -hmm. some standpoint from my memory before I was born to what I was what I experienced in my life, what I was taught was my ancestor uh, heritage who the ascended masters were uh the plan where they were going with it i mean um one of the things i i did want to mention though was and this goes with some one of the first things that you that you mentioned there when you, when you, what you, with what you just read and it is that when i was in the heavenlies i do have a memory of the what, the beings that they call the ascended that go as the ascended masters now um, were there. I remember when they were expelled, they thought I was going to go with them. I didn't, and I can I can remember them. It was like there was the division in heaven, and they were they were it was like they were drifting on a cloud. But they were it was like you they cut were, the rope like you and you set up a drift. You set up a drift. Actually, I'm starting to get Actually, a I'm echo to get now. A echo now. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to, I'll try to uh, be able to ignore it. Okay, so that that I think is pretty interesting in relation to what you just read about being cast out. Uh huh. It's now, garden time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I never had any particular teaching that had to do with with Eve and being of any lineage from that, what I was taught was that my bloodline, as I said earlier, my bloodline or bloodlines came from several different places and that we had interbred, but we were all from different planets. Uh, we didn't necessarily have physical bodies on the planets, but we were superior that uh, some, of, some people were more like the physical, but uh, some of us were well they didn't tell me tell me what kind of bodies they were but basically we were superior to be proud of it we if we were very arrogant looked down on humanity but at the same time we were taught to as the ascended masters are trying to get people to think that they're all love and compassionate well behind all that facade they're not like that they're actually as arrogant as all of us and they're very it, it's like boot camp from what i've heard like the the movie Metal Jacket is nothing compared to what Marines go through. These ascended masters are worse than that, and it's 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 dog eat dog. They um, they are masters, but they're masters of illusion. But they want to be your master. They don't 
want you to get to realize who you really are. They want they don't want you to know what the really real plan is. And speaking of the Bible, they use just enough quoting out of the Bible to make you think that they support the Bible and that they actually know more about the Bible and that that when you become a Christian you commit uh, intellectual and spiritual suicide and it's like getting a spiritual le- uh, frontal lobotomy <laughs> has a complete lie with it what I know from being inside of the inner circle of the organization is they don't want you to read the Bible because if you did you might not only pick up on the true spirit of God you might actually read the truth and not and see you'd, you'd realize what they were taking out of context is not esoteric hidden knowledge that they're going to tell you tell you higher enlightenment and higher thought you put it in context exactly how it is and you actually get the truth jesus is the word he's the he's the logos he's the word of god he's the law he spoke everything into being yeah. so uh he is not a small an avatar he is not a small a ascended master that is on a low budget low low count ascended master that they don't even want you to even they won't tell you about jesus they don't even want you to think about the master jesus they because they want to take you completely away from jesus christ and learning who he really is the word and it is only god's true plan it's God's rescue plan for us is the best way I can put it right now. And I don't want to be, I don't want to get too much into preachy stuff. Gosh, there's so much I wish I could share. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention, I could just touch on it a little bit, Please. is that what they told me about Atlantis. Oh, yeah, that would be act- awesome. They told me, okay, I may be, I may be the only person who actually that's alive that may know exactly what happened in Atlantis. They showed me what it was like. It was like I was there. And well, the reason they 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 actually took me there, it's kind of like uh, you relive the past. They were trying to keep me from leaving the organization. They were threatening me. They said, "Don't don't leave. Don't speak out against us because this is what's going to happen if you do." And that that what they said was, "Gosh, I saw Atlantis when it was going down. Exactly what happened. What it looked like." Uh, they, I, I know what their temples look like. They, the ascent, it was their, it was the center of the planet. It was like the new world order run by them. They were actually just about to control the entire earth and humanity at that point. God was the one that destroyed it. You may read otherwise that how it got destroyed. It was actually our heavenly creator that, that destroyed it because God's going to win this not Satan. Right. And and Lucifer is Satan. But I don't know. Do you want me to even go into detail about that? I can do it another time or maybe put uh, it on my blog. But. Well, yeah, I, I would really love to hear that because I think that's one of the most fascinating subjects. And, you know, I, I wanted to open phone lines, but we really don't have time. Let me, uh, D- Daniel, you wanted to comment here and then we'll go back i let Carolyn go back into this uh, topic of Atlantis because I, I think it's so fascinating. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I'm really sorry I did drop off, but I had heard everything you read before oh, okay, you. Good. Yeah, I, I just like dropped off right as I was about to begin <laughs> responding. So, um, yeah, you know, this thing is pretty big. Uh, and the way the heavenly hierarchies are broken up, there are a lot of other, you, you could call them persons or intelligences, um, besides just humans and maybe your basic demon running around. Um, and Carolyn is living proof that this is true. Uh, one of her alters gave me a lot of information about the certain things that you were asking about, especially like the reptilian question, so on and so forth. Uh-huh. Um, and the, the thing is, I get a lot of information from a lot of alters. And, and I don't always know what to do with it, and neither do the people I work with. So a lot of things, they, they stay on the back burner. It's like, oh, I don't know that this can be verified, or if it is completely true. Um, it may be, or it may be what they were told, which is no different than what Carolyn remembers being told, which could be outright lies. Like, 
you know, the ascended masters are the deliverers and saviors of humanity and the ones that are going to graduate us to higher consciousness, which we believe is a lie. Jesus Christ is the one who gave us his mind and uh, who wants to graduate us into the family of God and to rule and reign with him through all eternity. Um, so with the reptilian question, though, uh, one of the things that I, I was told, one of the pieces of information is that a, a lot of the reptilians are kind of like uh, walk-ins. What it seems like they do, at least according to what I was told, uh, is that they will come into the uh, fetus as like a spirit entity um, and take the human spirit inside of the fetus and put it in a box. And basically, that human spirit will never express itself wow. in that person. And then the reptilian will own the body. Uh, and it will basically be the walk-in for the entire lifespan of the person. And then uh, at certain rituals or different times, they can force the body to take their form, which is the seven foot, eight foot reptilian nasty. Um, now, is, is that the actual mechanics? <laughs> I don't know. That was what I was told. Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's that to whet someone's curiosity. Revelation 13.8 is very interesting. It says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, meaning the beast that comes out of the sea, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And I didn't understand this verse until I uh, understood the book of life. And I realized when I studied that out, that, and in this is actually, that study is found in my newest book, Kingdom, Government, and the Promise of Sheep Nations. But the book of life actually is a recording of every person that's ever been born because God knows every human. Yes. And um, those that are never written into the book of life are actually non-humans. They're not even human people. They're, they're other life forms. And so when you say, and they that dwell upon the earth shall worship the beast, all of them, uh, we're talking about that at this point in human history, there is a presence of other life forms um, on the earth that are, that are integrated into the beast kingdom, which comes back to what we were saying about, you know, they're trying to bring a lot of things on the earth. And, and, and what another thing, and this is my last point before coming back to Carolyn, uh, part of her told us is that, you know, basically it's all about the agenda for new heaven and new earth because new earth means new heavens. And that's, that, well, the heavens are the conglomerate, the sum total of all dimensions and heavenly places that are going to be cleansed as a result of the work that God has centered on humanity, which he purposed to be graduated into, you know, uh, the, the top ranking hierarchy of all of creation, because the Bible says we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. And what a lot of New Agers don't understand is that what they are buying into, in our, my opinion, is really counterfeit compared to what we have in Jesus, who is the author of our salvation and the savior of our souls and the one who wants to give us freedom and true life. So anyway, that's my last comments. We can come back to Carolyn. She has a lot more to say. Uh, they shall mingle themselves among the seed of men. Uh, Carolyn? Did you want me to finish mentioning about Atlantis? Yes, please uh, do. Okay. That's still going to be kind of cutting it short. But yeah, if, you, um, if you would be willing... Uh, we would love to have you back on, both you and Daniel, and to do a follow-up on this at your, you know, availability, um, if, you know, as if you're willing. And so we won't have to rush this subject, but and we can pick it up because I know that in, you know, we got eight minutes left. There's no way we'll be able to cover um, in fullness all that you could say on this and other things, so. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to come back as long as the the audience is um, interested in in hearing more. Um, oh yeah, there, there's a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot that that Daniel can explain that I can't explain that that has to do with the kingdom of God and what it means to be in Christ. And um, a lot of people don't get it, but they're going to get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It it just blow. It, people understand why the counterfeit's a counterfeit. You know, so right. there's a lot of questions that need to wake up to that. To, right. Exactly. But, okay, so I'll just uh, quickly tell you a little bit about sure. Atlantis. Please do. I was, um, there was a channel. Uh, I was on a piece of land. There was, uh, there was like earthquakes. 
There were fires everywhere. The sky was hazy, like with smoke or fog. There was a so many fires. As I, w- I was looking toward the mainland, okay, on the internet you may see pictures. There's pictures if you Google like Babylon and hanging gardens. There are pictures that remind me of what I saw, like with Atlantis. They worship the sun god. A lot of a lot of emblems about sun worship. That, but like I said, the ascended masters, the people who, the beings who parade as ascended masters, were the ones who were running that. And um, anyway, the water began to get so hot that it was boiling. People, okay, every the fires were burning so intensely on the the land that I was on, and the land that I was looking across the main part of Atlantis. It was. Everything was so much on fire and spreading. I could hear the people screaming. I could smell. I mean, to, even to this day, I can smell. In my, I can still remember the smell. It was terrible. The putrid smell. the 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 sky was like a, a rosy, eerie, eerie color, with the fires and the haze. And I could hear people screaming and f- echoing in the backgrounds and dogs barking and stuff the the as we the people were being driven off the land they were going into the water where the channel was and the water started to boil and people were being boiled alive in the water but they were still wading out in the water because it's either they get burned to death on the land and the, the land is like everything's crashing and falling around at the same time but they're still walking into the water and getting boiled and that was just I, I remember smelling it and feeling it and hearing it just as if I was there. And uh, it makes me really think that that could very well be what happened. It aligns with some of the, um, like in the Colburn Bible, there's a, a, a scroll that I share with uh, people um, called the Scroll of Thotis. And it aligns up with uh, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth um, and Thoth, you know, he speaks about himself as being an Atlantean priest king, and he talks about the time of the destruction of Atlantis, and it mentions those things that you are um, talking about in in those scrolls. And so, um, I, I absolutely believe that what you are saying is the way that it, it went down, because um, it, it's it's spoken of uh, precisely in that manner. And that's what the ascended masters feared for their future. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like they believe they're going to win, but at the same time, um, they they have fear because right. they know if you actually get it and you know the power of God, and you're on you're on, in Christ, that they're actually their power is limited, and they actually can be snuffed out. Right. So. I don't know. That's all I can say. I'll see about that for now. Looks right. like we're about out of time. We've got four minutes remaining, and I apologize to the listening audience that we were not able to take calls. I know um, that a lot of you would like to ask direct questions to both Carolyn and Dan, and so uh, we'll work out a time to have them back on in the near future. We do have some other guests lined up, so whenever we can make that happen, uh, we will do so, and we will Definitely make a point to accept calls during that time. But um, in the last three minutes, I'd like to give you both a chance to tell uh, tell us again your contact information and also your websites, uh, Daniel, where you do your radio programs, all of that information. Carolyn, let's start with you. Okay, my I have a blog. It's uh, beyondthephysicalrealm.com. That's that's pretty much it. I'm not on Facebook anymore. I'm considering going back, and when I do, I'll make sure it's uh, a an official page because people were impersonating me, and that's why I went off of social media. So if I go back on, I'm going to make sure that that uh, it's people know it's me and that nobody's trying to impersonate and spread false information. Yeah, absolutely. Um... And I'm sure that they hound you a lot because of the work that you're doing. Uh, Dan, would you give us your information? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
like I said in the beginning, our website is www.bridemovement.com. And that's bride like a groom and a bride movement.com. On our webpage, uh, there's, you know, the, the website is pretty self explanatory. We do have a page that's linked to the home page. It's called Mind Control. And on there, I have a series of uh, what, what is called a Q&A on mind control, what I did with a man named Dr. Preston Bailey. If people want to learn more about satanic ritual abuse, mind control, and programming and how all that works, um, because it's just you can't explain it all in you know, a few minutes. There's a lot to it. Um, there's also Carolyn's entire series, and uh, we'll be adding another series soon that we've been working on called Are My Memories Real? All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and thank you both for joining us and your willingness to come back on. God bless all. I pray that you are watched over, protected, 